Okay, here I am on to the last section of our practice exam. Uh, we're into Pythagorean territory here. We've got a right triangle. That's critical. We know two of the three sides, so this is our missing side here. I had started filming this and then uh, the camera ran out, so I had to start over, but I've written on some of this. No big deal. So we know that it's a squared plus b squared equals c squared. The c squared is the hypotenuse. Just don't get that mixed up. And I fill in 9, and I fill in 41, and I'm good to go. 41 times 41 is 1681. 9 squared is 81. I take away 81 from both sides, and I've got x squared is equal to 1600. Well, there's a little trick. When you've got two zeros and you're taking the square root, you're going to go down to one zero, and then you can just take the square root of 16. So square root of 16 is 4, with one zero is 40. So we know x is equal to 40. All right. Uh, the next one, then is similar but different. This is maybe a little bit of a challenge because you've got x minus 1 and x, but just show me that you know the basics. Start off with Pythagoras here again, and then fill in that you know that one of the legs is 7, and what you don't know is x minus 1 and x, and when we square each of those, we've got to be careful to foil this out, so I did some foiling over here. It's x minus 1 times x minus 1, you multiply the first terms, you get x squared. You multiply the inside and the outside terms, you get minus 2x. And then negative 1 times negative 1 is plus 1. So I get it over here that it's 49 plus. Then when we fold it out, we get x squared, which cancels with this x squared, and minus 2x plus 1. Well, 1 plus 49 is 50. I move the minus 2x over to the opposite side and divide by 2. Turns out x is 25, and x minus 1 is 25 minus 1. That's 24, OK? On to the next one then, again, a right triangle, 7 squared plus 9 squared, you add those up, you get 130. When you go to take the square root of 130, it's going to be a little bit more than 11, a little bit less than 12, but I want to know the exact answer, so I break it down. It turns out the prime factors do not have any perfect pairs to go out to the prom, so it's just left exactly as it is. If it had been 120, I could have taken out a couple of 2s, and I'd wind up with... 2 square root of uh, 30, um, but that would be just an example of one that might simplify, but this one does not. Okay, So now, on to this next one, which is a special right triangle. We know it's special because it's 60 and a right angle, so this would be 30 degrees over here, so it's our 30, 60, 90. This is the shortcut that you should memorize for that, that the short leg is kind of the foundation, and we double the short leg to find the hypotenuse and we multiply the short leg by radical 3 to go up to the long leg. Well, I've been extra tricky with this one. I've given you the long leg, so we divide by radical 3 to go down. That just means canceling the root 3 when I divide. The short leg is 10, and I double that to make 20. If you did this with your calculator, uh, you would get like uh, 9.999, and maybe that would be a little clue that you would round it up to 10. So you could do that Sokatoa style but it wouldn't necessarily give you the exact answer. Okay, on to this last one here. We've got um, an angle of 68 degrees, and we know that the opposite of that is 18. The hypotenuse is over here, but we don't care about that. We're not looking for it. We're looking for the adjacent side. So this is an example of TOA. So I write the tangent of 68 is equal to, then it's the opposite, 18 over x, the unknown. This is that Mr. Olson switcheroo thing, so you take and put the x over here, you put the tangent underneath, and then you just type into your calculator 18 divided by the tangent of 68. Make sure you're in degree mode, and I got 7.27 as my answer there. Okay, so on the last page here, we've got a uh, architectural problem where a roof, and I define roof to be the actual surface of the roof. It's not how like wide the house is. If you draw the wrong picture, I'll still give you credit, maybe take off a little bit for not reading English as it is, I hope, fairly clearly written. Um, the height of the roof is 13. It rises 13 feet. And so we're really looking for this angle. If you notice that 13 is exactly one half of 26, you could say, oh, that's a special triangle. We know this by heart. It's 30 degrees. You can also simply do the sine of the angle. There's our right angle. The sine is 13 over 26. And when you do the sine to the minus 1 of that ratio, 13 over 26, you get 30 degrees. Finding an angle 
means you're going to do the sine ratio, the so ka or toa, to the minus one. All right. Describe how you would construct an isosceles right triangle using GeoGebra. Okay, what's an isosceles right triangle? It's a right triangle that is isosceles. That means that these two sides are the same length, and we have a triangle. So all you really need to do, step one, is I would start by making a circle with a circle and point. So I'm not going to write this out because it'll take too long to watch me do this on camera, but then I would connect those like this. I'll actually, then I would connect those into a line. So like that would be step two. Step three then is construct a perpendicular. So I've got this and I can click on this point and this line and I can do a perpendicular like that. And then step four would be I'm going to zoom in a little bit. There's our circle. And I'm just going to connect these like that and shade that in. And I know that because I told the computer to make a perpendicular. All right, so I might describe that in words, but that is the concept that we use circles to measure things that are the same length, and that would make it isosceles. All right, exponential growth and decay. 25,000 is invested at 7% per year. Um, how much will be in the account after 20 years? I'm going to use this equation down here in our equation bank, so I'm going to write that right here. And so the amount after 20 years is going to be equal to 25,000 times 1.07. I know that the decimal equivalent of 7% is 07, and I add that, and that's raised to the 20th power. So I get my trusty calculator, turn that on, and I have 25,000 uh, times 1.07 carat to the 20 and hit enter and I get approximately 96,000 742 dollars and 11 cents okay how long would it take uh, for my investment to get up to 1 million dollars well that's definitely more than 96,000 to answer how long questions for you guys, you got to use your calculator. So we go to the calculator, and I'm going to clear this out. Turn off plot one. Don't make that rookie mistake. I can't help you on the exam. 25,000, and then times 1.07 caret to the x. That's our variable. And I'm going to jump further down and type in 1 million because I know that that is what I'm interested in. Make sure you count six zeros for a million. Now I'm going to go to the window and I know that the number of years that I'm going to invest this, well the smallest amount could be zero. I know 20 years only gets me up to 96. I'm going to be big. I'm going to go up to like 75 years. And my scale every 10 years maybe you can make it zero. My Y minimum is going to be zero dollars but I'm going to go up to 1.1 million 1, 1, and then 5 zeros right there. And I'm going to make my scale be 0. And I'm going to look at that. And there's my money growing. Zooming way up. And let's see that line. Oh, there we go. There's a million dollars. So it's going to be right there. I can do that by second. And the trace button gives me calculate. And I want to find the intersection of those two. So I hit 5. Is that my first curve? Yes, it is. Is that my second curve? Yes, it is. Do I want to guess? No, I want the calculator to tell me. And it tells me 54.52 years. So I would um, say approximately, approximately 54.5 years. And I'd write that out in a full sentence, and I'd maybe draw my graph to get full credit. But like I said, in the interest of time, I'm just going to call it a day. Hope that helped.